is incredibly expensive. There's just not that much of it. The bay's over there, the ocean's over here, and things aren't that much better on this side of the ocean either. If it takes a stadium of Olympic proportions to host the games, where is Beijing going to put it and at what cost? The answer is right here. In this episode, a worldwide exclusive, inside the world's largest bird's nest, the National Stadium, the Summer Games' main venue. Then how a bubbly building is making a 100-year-old architectural theory a reality. And progress on the National Indoor Stadium. Events here always sell out. Also, thousands of reporters will send home stories of hope, achievement, and heartbreak from here, the National Media Center. Finally, imagine national heroes from around the world rubbing elbows at this work in progress, the Olympic Village. All coming up on Beijing Are You Ready? The National Stadium is the centerpiece of the Beijing 2008 Olympics. It's also a symbol of China's enormous effort to accommodate the athletes of the world, to rejuvenate Beijing, and to set the tone for the Olympic Games of the future. The National Stadium is the handiwork of Swiss architecture firm Herzog & Demuron, the China Architecture Design & Research Group, and engineering contractors Arup Sport. Their stunning, and some might say startling, creation won the stadium design competition for the 2008 Games, and construction began in March of 2004. It's even got a nickname, the Bird's Nest. One of its chief architects, Mr. Li Xingong, tells us why. The, the steel structure is, 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 is woven mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. like a bird's nest. The Chinese media and Chinese people pick up this name. This is a very nice name. Uh, not only uh, correctly describe the structure, but also give a feeling of natural of nature. In Chinese circles, bird's nests are edible symbols of prosperity, if for no other reason that they have very expensive ingredients. So it's no surprise that this larger-than-life bird's nest also comes with a hefty price tag. When finished, it will cost 423 million U.S. dollars. That includes the 22 miles of steel it takes to build this 1,083 feet long, 720 feet wide arena. As for the height, it's 227 feet tall, about the height of the Golden Gate Bridge at low tide. All right, it's November 2006. As you can see, the National Stadium is being built right here. So they've got a year and a half before this project is completed. Most of the 22 miles of steel goes into the 24 main support girders, which weigh in at 1,800 tons apiece. Hundreds of workers from all over China labor day and night to build this venue. Mr. Zhang Hongli is deputy general manager of the National Stadium. Uh, the biggest challenge I think for this kind of uh, is the steel structure. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of uh, the shape of the steel structure is very complicated. Also. You know, these are not a formal, a regular design. The last month, we just passed this very key period for the steel structure. We have taken off all the supporting system. At this moment, the burn already stand up by itself. Removing the support structure in September 2006 without any problems meant that the bird's nest had cleared its first major hurdle. It also had budget hurdles to clear, which meant that some ideas had to stay on the drawing board. Architects had to scrap the retractable roof, once a must-have feature, for both cost reduction and safety reasons. The first, the, the retractable roof, is not the most important element for our right. design. The secondly, architecture is, it is the kind of art which is much more related with the society, economy, uh, uh, political, uh, many, many other elements of the society. It's not a pure art. Many things can happen in a big project, not right. only in China, not right. only this bird stadium, but also in the America, or in Britain, or in uh, Japan. We think this is normal. If we are professional architects, this is something we have to face. We have to uh, make the adjustment the best. After the redesign of the, of the stadium, bird nest is bird nest. Yes. It doesn't change. Right. Let's take a look inside. Let's go see what's going on. This will be our first look at the National Stadium. Before you reach the event floor, you enter a mezzanine area. This is where you'll find concessions. 
It's meant to be people-friendly, reflecting only one of the three missions of the Beijing Olympic Games. The 2008 Olympic Games have more than competition as goals. Their goal is to be green, and of course that means to be ecologically friendly. To be the People's Olympics, the second goal, which means spreading the Olympic spirit throughout China, sharing Chinese culture with her guests, and positioning the Games as an opportunity to deepen understanding and friendship among the peoples of the world. And the final goal of the Beijing Olympics is to be high tech, to use cutting edge technology in all of the venues and of course in the coverage of the games. I am right here on the ground floor of National Stadium and this is where the opening and closing ceremonies will take place and a lot of the track and field events. Even 20 years ago this effort would have been impossible. China lacked the economic means to build such a stadium, the technological wherewithal to pull it off and she wouldn't have collaborated with foreigners to get it done. Even more impressive is the fact that for the first time ever, the Olympics will be held on Chinese soil. This dirt wasn't Olympic soil. This dirt was where plants grew, where people actually had little houses that they lived on, and now it's right here making history. Beijing will benefit beyond these Olympics. The city will have beautiful new venues, cleaner air, and valuable experience as an international host. There's still a ton of work to be done and a ton of dirt to be moved by the summer of 2008. So are you on schedule? Uh, yes, we control the schedule very well. How? No. Yes, because how? Uh, and one reason is uh, our general contractor, they control all the section of the work uh, very seriously. and. Uh, they do very wonderful job. This is, um, I think, the main reason. Another reason is uh, we are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we revisited the bird's nest six months later, and it looks like they're on track to meet, if not beat, the deadline. The Chinese people's work style is to put their heads down and plow through a project without taking the time to rest or relax. They save that for after the work is complete. Behind the bird's nest, there's a futuristic structure. Nicknamed the water cube, it promises to be another architectural highlight of the Beijing Olympics. The beautiful, bubbly National Aquatic Center boasts a swimming pool, diving well, and seats for 17,000 lucky fans. The cube will host swimming, synchronized diving, and water polo events. And by the end of the 2008 Olympics, Spectators will have seen 44 gold medals draped around the necks of beaming athletes. Chris Boss with PTW Architects in Sydney, Australia, won the Atmosphere Award at the Venice Biennale in 2004 for his design of a steel lattice building that replicates the shape and form of bubble bath foam. Now he's putting that design to the test in Beijing.